looking for board members for your new nonprofit or you're trying to deal with board members for your new nonprofit, here are five questions you need to ask yourself in order to be successful. Hey y'all, this is Tiffany with Boss on a Budget. So I help people start nonprofits and raise money for their new nonprofit. So if you need help with that and you wanna join a community of nonprofit founders raising money, then comment join below and I'll send you a link for my private community. It's only open four times during the year, but if it's not open, you can at least join the waiting list. Recruiting board members or keeping board members is one of the hardest things for new nonprofit founders to do. And if you're watching this video, before I really get into the meat of it, I just want you to know that you're not alone. That if you are struggling with board members, just know that everyone has similar struggles. It does not mean that you're bad at this or it does not mean that the people you recruited are bad people. So let's just get that out of the way first. The second thing I just want to talk about before I get into the meat of the video is that if you are dealing with majority family and friends on your board, then before you even think about watching this video and processing this video, I want you to think about who else could join your board outside of those people. Because it's just not necessarily a good strategic move to stay with family and friends on your board. I completely understand how you would want to start there but eventually you're gonna to have to branch out. If you need help with that, then watch this video I'm linking above because I talked about that before. All right, you ready? So here are five questions you need to ask yourself if you feel like you're having trouble recruiting and keeping and maintaining board members. And make sure you watch to the end because I have a bonus question. Number one is the most important question. It's have I made the expectations clear? I have found that one of the reasons why nonprofit founders and their board members do not click is because one side thinks they're supposed to be doing this and the other side thinks they're supposed to be doing this and it does not match up. And there's not a lot of communication, at least up front when people are joining the board, about what the founder thinks they should be doing or expects them to be doing. So a lot of times you'll have these struggles that you don't even realize are there when you're in your meetings because you're frustrated as the founder because you feel like the people should show up better. They should show up more engaged. They should show up more connected to the mission and you find yourself doing everything. But on the flip side, a lot of those people, especially if they know you, are leaning on you, they're waiting on you, they're deferring to you instead of really stepping into their full role as a board member. And because people don't always have those conversations in the beginning, then there's always that disconnect. And the other thing you need to remember about this is that this is an ongoing conversation. So you could clarify upfront and say to board members, the expectation when you serve is that you are legally, ethically responsible for the decisions that this organization makes, but you're also expected to come to meetings. And when you come to meetings, become fully engaged, serve in some role or serve on a committee or serve as an officer, do work in between and make sure you do things within the deadlines that are set. Ask people for money and be completely active in the fundraising process, especially if you're a startup. Now, those are expectations you can lay out in the beginning, but you're gonna to have to continue to communicate that because even when you say one thing, people may not interpret it the way you meant it. So people may hear you say fundraising and they may be like, oh, I'm participating in fundraising because I showed up at the event. Meanwhile, they haven't invited anybody. They didn't help print the flyers. They didn't help with the planning, all that kind of stuff. And in your head, you're thinking, well, that's what that's what I meant. So you really have to work hard on communicating your expectations, but also their roles and responsibilities. Because I find that in like smaller community based, more grassroots organizations, you tend to recruit people who are who look like you, who have similar backgrounds as you. And some of those people have never served on a board before. And I have found with like smaller and more like grassroots community organizations, most people that they're recruiting for their first board has never served on a board before. Or if they served on the board, they were pretty passive on that board. So the very first thing you gotta ask yourself is, have I made the expectations clear? And also, have you explained and made sure they know their roles and responsibilities? The second question is, have I provided the information and education that they need? 
and I find that this is a follow-up to what I just talked about. So you can ask people to fundraise on your behalf, but some people have never fundraised before, or some people don't have a full, complete understanding of what it means to fundraise. If you need help with that, I have a lot of videos on that. Try this video I'm linking above, which talks about what fundraising is and what fundraising is not. Some people have the interest and the will, they just don't know what to do. So as an individual, first of all, as an individual board member, each person should identify the areas that they wanna develop in order to help the organization grow. And then as a collective, the board should be thinking about the areas they need to grow and develop and how you all can do that together. It's a much better process when you learn together, when you take classes together, watch videos together, discuss, read articles, read blogs listen to podcasts. There's so much information out there, especially around boards and their duties. There is a lot of information out there. I'll link a resource below for you, but it's not for a lack of information. So it's up to you as the founder to motivate those people to begin to want to know more and to learn the skills they need to be successful in their role. Because when they are successful in the role, then the organization grows. Number three, have I inspired them to participate? Now, this is a question that may trip some people up because they're like, I shouldn't have to inspire and motivate anybody. You signed up to be on a board. You should be ready and willing to participate because otherwise, why did you say yes? Right. And so I, I really do get that perspective. But what you have to realize is that people are people and they need incentives. They need motivation. They need to be engaged. So if you find that your board members are coming to the meetings and they're not talking, that's not a good sign. If you find that board members are coming to meetings and they're not asking questions or they're tapping out or they're missing meetings and not showing up consistently, that is not a good sign. So the question is, what is happening at the meetings or are they inspired and motivated to show up? And again, I get it. They should be inspired just by their own commitment. I know you're feeling like, why do I as the founder have to push them to do something they agreed to do? I get it, but you do need to be intentional about how you bring people in so that they want to show up. Do they come out of meetings feeling inspired, feeling motivated, feeling ready to go, ready to conquer the world? Or do they come out of the meetings yawning? Or do they come out of the meetings feeling like that was a lot with a big headache? Or do they feel like you all are meeting constantly for two, three hours and nothing's getting done? Like, so you need to think about how can you put in activities to better engage and get them involved. Two things I'll just say. First thing, make sure the board members are actively involved in reporting out, designing the activities for the meetings, facilitating parts of the meetings. That's number one. And then number two, make sure you always bring it back to the mission, to the focus of the work. Why are you doing this? People need to be reminded constantly about why it's so important that they're serving in this role because in the end, it's because it's helping somebody or helping your mission. So always tie it back to that and whatever activities you have going on. So I recorded a video years ago about this and it still stands true. So I'm linking the video above and it talks about how to better engage your board members in meetings. Number four, is the mission something they believe in? So something that I haven't said already that's important for you to do when you're recruiting board members is to vet them. And by vet them, I mean, ask them questions and figure out why they want to participate, why they want to sit on your board. And you need to ask questions about how they want to contribute or what value they bring to the board. It's important to ask those questions. It's important to know who's serving on your board. And it's absolutely important to know whether or not they really care about the mission because people will be more inclined to do the work if they feel some kind of connection, if they feel like they're doing the right thing, if they feel like they're making a positive impact on the world. So the mission has to mean something for them because if they're just coming to serve on a board so they can put it on their resume and they have no connection to what you're doing, have no desire to learn more about the services you're going to provide, and they're just there to participate, then how are they going to show up when it's time to introduce you to new people and share information about the organization? How are they going to ask for money on behalf of the organization if they really don't believe in the mission or the mission just isn't something that's a priority for them? All right, that's going to show up in their willingness to do certain things and how they talk about your organization or whether or not they even will talk about your organization with other people. So it's really important that you assess 
what they think about the mission and their connection to the mission and make sure you have people who actually care about it. The fifth question is, have I done the right assessment to make sure this person is the right fit? And this very much relates to what I just talked about, but in a broader sense. So you should have a set of questions that you ask every single board member before you bring them on board. You need to get a sense of their perspective, their beliefs, and their experience. You should know things like have they served on a board before. You should know if they're interested in fundraising or interested in marketing or helping with grant writing. You should know what their skill sets are in case you need people to pitch in and do some of the work as you're starting your organization. You should know some background information about them. You should know if they've engaged with other organizations in the past and if you can figure out how that worked. Does their personality work well with other people? What kind of personality do they have? Are they going to mesh well with the people who are already on the board? And you should have a nominating committee on your board who's always vetting people, who's always coming up with potentials so that you never are in a position where you're like, oh snap, we have a vacancy on the board and we don't have any options. But I know as a startup, you got to get there, right? But just know that anybody who comes on your board, you should be asking questions. I always say it is a privilege for people to serve on your board. It is a privilege to carry out your mission and people should not take it lightly. And so you should take that recruitment process very seriously before you bring someone on who will be responsible for making decisions for your organization. So again, think about their professional experience, their personal experience, their background, their demographics, their characteristics, their personality, their skill sets, all the things that they could bring to the board. Make sure you assess that and make sure it's an overall fit with what you already have. If you need help recruiting a board member, I have a board recruitment toolbox that can help you go through this process. It even includes sample questions that you could ask board members if you need that. Just comment board recruitment below and I'll send you the link to purchase. Here's a bonus question that I think you should also be asking yourself. Have I asked the board members how they want to contribute? So one thing you gotta remember is that this is a two-way street and this is with anything. With anything where you're asking somebody to do something, you gotta remember that they gotta wanna do it. Like there has to be an incentive for them. There has to be some kind of value to them. And the value may just be they wanna help somebody. They wanna spend their time wisely. They wanna contribute to a good cause. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to give them money to serve because most nonprofit board members do not get paid. They are a voluntary position. But you gotta still think about what value can I bring to this person so that they want to come back. So it relates to what I talked about in this video. Are you providing with the education they need so they can feel like they're equipped to do the things that they're required to do as a board member? Are you building relationships with them? Are you talking with them? Just asking them how they're doing, asking them about their family, making sure they're good. Because sometimes people aren't engaged because they got a lot of stuff going on. And are you building a personal relationship with them or some kind of relationship with them so that they feel like, they're human, that they feel like you actually care. And by asking the question about how they want to contribute, you can figure out that there are people who can help you execute some things that you may feel like as a founder you have to do yourself. Maybe you cannot stand social media, and I know most of y'all can't, <laughs> but maybe there's a board member who always wanted to figure out how to do that and wants to tackle that for you. Or maybe they have a niece or a nephew who has free time who they can supervise to do that for you. But if you don't ask questions of your board members, if you don't engage them, there are certain things you're never going to find out. So just remember, this is a two-way street. This is the actual person you're engaging with. Make sure you ask them what they need from you. Ask them what value you can bring to them to make their service more enjoyable. Was this helpful? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you have other tips, suggestions, things that have worked for you, Boss on a Budget is about community. It's about lifting each other up. It's about supporting each other. So I'm not the only person with the information. There are a lot of other people who can help you as well. So if you know you can help somebody in the comments, drop your comments below. If you need help with starting your nonprofit, visit me at bossonabudget.com. I have resources there to help you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.